master of illusion. The fire of the laws of reason. A magician, if you will. But then, what is a magician? A person who tears asunder your rules of logic and crumbles your world of reality so that you can go home and say, Oh, what a clever trickster he is. What a sly deceiver. And go to sleep in the security of your own real world. <laughs> What is real? Are you certain you know what reality is? How do you know that at this second you aren't asleep in your bed dreaming that you are here in this theater? I know. It all seems too real. Well, haven't you ever had a dream that seemed very real till you woke up? But then again, how do you know that you ever really did wake up? In fact, perhaps when you had thought that you were waking up, you had actually just begun to dream. You see what I mean, don't you? All your life, your past, your rules of what can or cannot be, may all be part of one long dream from which you are about to awaken and discover the world as it really is.
awakening the dead is beyond the scope of my meager powers. But the least I can do for you is make Isaac Newton quiver in his grave by defying his law of gravity. What goes up must come down, perhaps, but not always. Torture and terror have always fascinated mankind. Perhaps whatever made your predecessors see the sadism of the Inquisition and the gore of a gladiator's arena is the same thing that makes you stare at bloody highway accidents and thrill to the terror of death in the bull ring. Today, television and films give you the luxury of observing grisly dismemberments and deaths without anyone actually being harmed. But ladies and gentlemen, have you ever seen the sight of human butchery in person? Well, tonight, on this stage, you will have the privilege of seeing such a sight. For tonight, I, Montag, will saw a living woman in half. <laughs> Old hat, you think? A tired trick. Well, skeptical ladies, which one of you? will volunteer for this harmless stunt.
You were expecting a mere handsaw and a covered wooden casket? Oh, no. That's the old-fashioned way of sawing people in half. Today, magicians are mechanized, too. And nothing will be concealed from your view. Table for how many, please? set up beautifully. Of course, it was a trick. If it was all that easy, a light and a few mirrors like you say, 
Why hasn't anyone else done it before? How do you know someone hasn't? When's the last time you've seen a magician? You know, sometimes you make things sound as exciting as a shoelace factory. Hey, let's think about those Mets today. Six Ugh. to four, that's my team. Everything except for sports, that is. You know, I'm really hurt by that. What kind of a relationship are we going to have if you don't take an interest in my work? In your work? Look, I was raised in a house with four brothers, a tomboy sister, and a dad who bet on basketball games. The only reason why I left home was to get away from the game of the week. So, in a city full of interior decorators, you had a fall in love with a sports writer. That's your tough luck. What's that all about? I don't know. Maybe a holdup. Looks like someone got hurt. Wait a minute, I got an idea. Press, press, let us through, please. Press, press, officer, officer, let us through, please. Press, press. Toad, and we'll drink the gin. Let's go. Okay. Hey, Jack, hurry up, man. Your girlfriend's on the tube. All right, I'm coming. My mother once told me, as mothers have been known to do since the beginning of time, that if I didn't have anything nice to say, I should keep my precious little trap shut. Well, if you watch this program regularly, with the glut of cheap exploitation films and the lack of talent on and off Broadway, that's a practice that I find increasingly difficult to follow in the theater and review portion of this program. <laughs> Sarcastic broad you've got there, Jack. So that's my girl. Dear old that I'm abandoning stage and screen today to bring you a much more exotic bit of entertainment billed as Montag the Great. Your eyes see, but your mind won't believe. In case you haven't guessed, Montag's the magician. Well, the other night I took in Montag's show expecting nothing more than a nostalgic reminder of the tuxedoed Svengali's that filled my childhood with disappearing rabbits and Levitating volunteers, and yes, women saw it in half before your very eyes. Montag provided me with more than I had bargained for. He did indeed saw a member of the audience in half, only he used an electric saw that could have tumbled a redwood and did it out in the open where the entire audience could watch the blade pass through the woman's body. It put me in a state of fright such as I haven't experienced since the wolf man had me quivering under the seats of the old bijou in Kansas City, a state from which I could not revive until the woman arose in one piece and took her bow. We'll try and get Montag here on this show and see if we can't worm some of his dark secrets out of him. But don't wait. See his act just as soon as you can. That's our show for today, girls. Join us tomorrow when we'll be talking to female liberation leader Alice Dedman. I'm Sherry Carson, and this has been Housewife's Coffee Break. Mr. Montag, I'm Sherry Carson. Sherry Carson, I have a daytime talk television show. I'd like to have you on my show. Do you mind if I come in? I don't give interviews.
Wouldn't you like to have a seat? No, thank you. I told you I do not grant interviews. Look, Mr. Montag, I saw your show last night and I thought you were absolutely fabulous. I gave you a rave plug on my television show today. Look, with the exposure of 15 minutes on the air, you wouldn't have an empty seat in the audience for a month. I appreciate your plug, as you say, but I'm afraid a personal appearance would be impossible. I can't guarantee you this, but there may be a chance I could get you on our network's national nighttime show, if you cooperate, of course. No. Is that all, Miss Carson? I'm sorry I bothered you. You probably have some magic hocus-pocus for selling tickets anyway. Goodbye. Perhaps I have been too hasty in rejecting your proposal. And perhaps you have been too hasty in your evaluation of my meager talents. Why not come back and see the performance tonight? There will be tickets awaiting you at the box office for you and a companion. Tonight, you will see a new illusion. And then, if you feel the same way, perhaps we will work out some kind of arrangement. Why, thank you, Mr. Montag. I certainly will be there tonight. And I am so, so sorry for being so... No! I found you perfectly charming. Good day. Good day. I'll see you tonight.
but not always. Kill you for this. I'm sorry. Shh. Torture and terror have always fascinated mankind. Perhaps whatever drove your predecessors to the sadism of the Inquisition and the gore of the gladiator's arena is the same thing that compels you to stare at bloody highway accidents and thrill to death in the boring. Today, television and films give us the luxury of watching grisly dismemberments and deaths without anyone ever getting harmed. But ladies and gentlemen, have you ever had the fine luxury of observing the spectacle of human butchery in person? Well, tonight, on this stage, I will give you this opportunity. For tonight, I, Martin, will drive a spike through the brain of a female volunteer from this audience. Which one of you will volunteer for this harmless stunt? Come now, my skeptical friends. A moment ago, you were tired of my old tricks. Don't tell me you're afraid of me now. Isn't there one lady among you who is considerate enough to satisfy her fellow human beings lust for blood? metal spike into this woman's brain. <laughs> Would a gentleman from the audience kindly come up here and inspect this object? I'll do it. It is solid metal, isn't it? to be. 
You won't notice that it is sharpened on the end to enable it to pierce the subject's skull. Will you now take this hammer and pound the spike into the wood, thereby proving that it is surely metal? Are you now convinced? It is. Thank you. You may return to your seat. Now! We are ready.
Quarter Tag. I'd like you to beat my fiance, Jack Ward. Jack, Montag, again. Ah, Miss Carson. And the helpful young man from the audience. Won't you come in and have a seat? Did you enjoy tonight's performance as much as last night's? Oh, we certainly did, but mm. I, I don't suppose there's any way we can get you to tell us your secrets? Secrets? <laughs> Why, it's nothing more than a illusion. Why, what you think you've seen me do, you know never could have happened. So what more could they be but mere simple, Harmless illusions. I'm afraid your illusions may not be as harmless as you think. What do you mean? You know that woman you pretended to saw in half last night? Some nut must have followed her after the show to a restaurant and done the trick for real. They found her body in a booth. Cut in two pieces. Oh, how awful. How do you know? I saw it in the paper just as I was leaving the apartment. I recognized her photo. It was her body that we ran into last night. Very unfortunate. You can't blame Montag. The killer could have been watching a Western on television and gone out and killed someone. Nevertheless, I feel very guilty. Ah, she's right. All the psychotics on the street aren't your fault. And they're probably more likely to go on a rampage after a typical television show than after one of your performances. It was just one in a million. Well, Montag, have you reconsidered being on my show? Yes, I have reconsidered. But I'm sorry to say I must still refuse to be interviewed. However, I will agree to perform an illusion. A very special illusion. If I can have the technical facilities necessary to do it. Anything, anything you want. Would Friday's program be all right? I think so. And now, if uh, you allow me, I must ask you to leave. You see, these performances do leave me quite exhausted. And uh, despite your delightful company, I find it difficult suppressing my yawns. Good night. Oh, I would like you to come to tomorrow's performance, too. For tomorrow, I promise you a new and different illusion. We would miss it for the world. Excellent. Your tickets will be waiting for you at the box office. Good night. It was a pleasure. Good night. Don't be such a lousy sport. It won't kill you to spend one more night in the theater. No, but if I did go, which I have no intention of doing, by the way, I might kill you. Look. How many basketball, football, baseball, hockey games have I sat through for you? If you hate them so much, then how come you always beg to be with me when the games are sold? Oh, yeah? Did I beg to see that intercollegiate wrestling tournament? And yuck, I never smelled anything so terrible. Then how come you were drooling at those almost naked male bodies? Well, it was just kind of nice to see one that was in good shape for a change. Well, I just hope you like Montag's body. Because tomorrow night, it's going to be you and Monte all alone. Oh, come on, Jack. Don't be so pig-headed. You heard what he said. If we don't show up for his show, we're going to offend him, and he's not going to show up for my show.
tomorrow night, sure and fight it up. Late dinner after the show, and we'll see what develops. Which? Good night. of an appetite anyway. All right. Hello, Steve. Yeah, Jack. Yeah, her skull was pierced through the ears. There was a lot of internal bleeding. Her face was a black and blue bloody mess. <laughs> Worst Halloween mask I've ever seen. Well, Greg, I'll show you the pictures. Yeah, they identified her right away. Yeah, they're contacting her family now. There should be a good photo soon. Yeah, take care. Yeah, bye. Montag again. 
She wants them on her show. Sibley? I don't know. It could be. And if it is? And if it is, that means there's a psycho out in the audience who gets turned on by Montag's tricks. And then he follows the subjects out of the theater to do the tricks for real. Or Montag himself. <laughs> now that would be what I call a thesis publicity stunt. But you know, it could be. Anyway, as soon as you get a good photograph of the Sibley gal, I'll be able to tell for sure if it's the same woman I saw up on the stage. I'll let you know the second it comes in. Uh. Isn't there one lady among you considerate enough to satisfy your fellow human beings' lust for blood? Solid metal. Tonight, we've made one little modification for this performance. I'm afraid we had to add this stock to restrain the young lady from flinching when the punch press comes crashing down on her body. Gentlemen from the audience, kindly come up here and assist me. Does this feel like solid wood to you? the audience. Strike it. Now place it on the shelf of the machine. Thank you. You may sit down. Allow me to remove this pretty ornament. It would be such a shame to ruin it.
allow me to show you the area you will operate on. surveillance on a weird hunch. They think I was the one that was nuts. Anyway, 
Can you imagine a psycho chasing a woman down the street, pushing a punch press? No. <laughs> anyway, I didn't come here to play Scott in the yard. Oh. trying to reach you all night. You finally get a good picture of that woman? Yeah, that may be old business. You saw a Montag show again tonight, didn't you? Yeah, only for the third time now. Yeah, what was his coup de grace tonight? Well, this time he punch pressed a woman from head to foot, and as usual, she came through it in fine style. Why? All right, listen to this. A woman heard a man screaming in the apartment next to her. She ran in, and her neighbor, a Mr. Kowicki, was lying on the bedroom floor holding his wife's head. You know, the rest of her body was on the bed about five feet away. She looked like she'd been run over by a threshing machine. I'm at the 18th Street station now. Yeah, look, the cops have a photo of Sibley and also the woman that was killed tonight. Now, you better get down here and have a look. Give me 15 minutes. Let me see that photo, will you? Another psycho murder. This time a woman completely mashed to a pulp. Remember Montag's trick tonight? Oh, God. I'm on my way to the police station to look at that Sibley photo and the photo of the other woman. Hey, where are you going? I'm going with you. Listen, I saw those women. I'm going to look at the photos, too. All right, suit yourself. Yeah, that's the woman. I'm sure of it. I was just inches away from her on the stage. What about the other one? I'm sure that's the woman Montag had on the punch press. So where do we go from here? So where do we go from here? Have you told anyone else about the connection you made between Montag's shows and the murders? Well, just the people here. Oh, in Montag. So when did you talk to him? Last night, right after the show. That means if Montag is the killer, he would have had to run out after Miss Sibley right after you told him you suspected a connection between the previous trick and the restaurant killing. And he would have committed tonight's murder knowing you were in the audience. That doesn't seem very likely. Yeah, but there's nothing that's very rational about any of these murders. True enough. But let's figure it this way. No one knows we made a connection between the show and the killings. Other people in the audience may have made the same connection, but if we keep these photos out of the papers for a day, they can't know for sure. All we have to do is attend tonight's performance, keep the featured volunteer under surveillance after the show. If the uh, killer goes after her, we get him. If he doesn't try tonight, we try it again tomorrow night. And if that doesn't work? We go back to old-fashioned police work. 
You know what gets me about this whole thing? What really bugs me is that we haven't been able to locate a single murder weapon in any of the killings. I mean, the slicing is one thing. I can even figure the skull cracking. But you just don't mash a body like the one we found tonight with a hand weapon you can hide in your pocket. It's as if all the weapons just disappeared, like magic. be safer than swallowing a sword. No cipher mates. No DDT. No calories. An excellent way to get your iron. The only problem in swallowing a sword is that if you wiggle around too much while you're doing it, it may interfere with your digestive tract. Young ladies, desserts. Will a gentleman from the audience please come up here and prove that these swords are real? I will. And lethal. You must be stage struck. Come back here and take the sword. We didn't figure out two volunteers. Yeah, excuse me. We'll have to split up. Now, sir, sever the rope. Are you convinced the sword is real? It appears to be. Thank you. You may take your seat. I think I've been tempting you long enough. 
with my little three.
I guess we just go back to your place and wait. Let's go.
Kramer was staked out at the other woman's apartment. He hears a crash, goes in, finds her dead. The same way, her insides were just all torn apart. Greg, who was in the car with that woman? Look, where are you now? Good. Okay, meet us at the police station. We're leaving right away. Goodbye. Come on, honey, let's go. I'm telling you, she was alone in that car. I saw her walk into the garage alone. I saw her drive away alone. I followed her for 20 minutes and she was alone. And I was 15 seconds behind her when she stopped. And she was still alone. But someone could have gotten into her car while you were waiting for her to leave the garage. And that same person could have killed Mrs. Ross and then jumped from the car just before you got to it. That's not very possible. Well, then you tell me, what is possible? What about the one you were watching? Could anyone have been in the room with her? Sure, there could have been someone waiting inside. Or where they disappeared to. I was watching that front door from the minute she went in. And that, the back door was bolted from the inside. What about the windows? The only window that wasn't locked was the one with the air conditioner in it. And judging by the screws, that window hadn't been open in years. Look, you know, we appreciate your help in all this, but I'm getting a little tired of you playing detective. There's a lot of things you haven't even thought of. Things that we've been considering for a long time. We've gone over this thing 20 times. Some of the things, for example, is we're looking for two killers, not one. Two killers. And if someone had been waiting in that apartment for Miss Andrews, that person couldn't have been at the theater to see Montag's trick. And the person that was at the theater couldn't have got back in time. And another thing that you don't know, someone killed a morgue attendant today, trying to get at the woman that was killed last night. I'm sorry. It's just that everything that's happened is so impossible. Look, let's just say improbable. They did happen. In fact, that's almost all we know. Montag is scheduled to perform on your show tomorrow, isn't he? Yes, he's supposed to do some sort of a fire trick. But I guess that's out of the question now. Only if you want it to be. What do you mean by that? If Montag decides to do one of his specialties, who would be the logical volunteer? Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I guess I would. If you're willing, I'd like you to go through with this act. We'll be right by your side. You'll be on guard and never out of our sight till we catch a killer. Your protection didn't help those other two women. Well, now, he explained all that. They couldn't possibly have been with the other two both at the same time. I'll be all right. I'll do it. Thank you, Sherry. Well, I guess you're old enough to know what you're doing. Jack, everything will be all right. Everything will go just as we've planned. You'll see. Oh, please, Jack, what can go wrong? Nothing much. You can get killed, that's all. Someone's going to be with me all the time. Listen, believe me, I'm no hero. Too many things can go wrong. Like what? Just things. Well... Just in case they do. And I cash in my chips and go to that big network in the sky. How about one for good luck? It's not funny. <laughs> studio now. I have to be there three hours before the show, you know. Just be careful. Oh, you bet. See you tonight.
trick I am about to perform will be the greatest illusion in my career. You know, I'm sure you've seen many magicians uh, performing clever tricks using volunteers from the audience. But uh, tell me, as you were watching them, how many times did you get the thought that those volunteers were actually henchmen of the magician, planted in the audience to dupe you. Well, today, I shall dispel any such skepticism. For today, I shall let every single member of this audience participate in a trick that will stagger the minds of our television viewers. Afterward, they still may not believe what they have witnessed. But you, who are here, will believe. For you will have lived through it. You will live through an experience that you now think no living creature can survive. But first, let us link our minds. If you can see and hear me, both here in the studio and in the viewing audience, concentrate. Concentrate on putting your being into my mind, and I will concentrate on putting my mind in your being. Look deeply at me. Let your eyes fly like spears from a distance, breaking down the barriers between us. Penetrate into my mind. <laughs> your hand. Our hands are bleeding. Greg, our hands are bleeding. Greg, 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 look at your hand. Greg, Greg, it's Montag. He's doing it. Montag, we've got to stop him. He's going to kill everyone. Steve, look at your hand. Steve, Steve. to the inferno. Almost red. 
ready. Soon you will feel the exquisite warmth of the beautiful flames before you. Montag was going to push everyone in the audience into the fire. He had everyone hypnotized. Somehow he was making everyone's hand bleed. They're not bleeding now. His power must have died with him. Well, it's all over now. for the tricks until Montag stared out into the audience. Didn't you feel funny when he did that? Mm. Well, when he started staring on that television screen, I just refused to look at him. Lucky for everyone you did. But how could he hypnotize hands into bleeding? How could he have killed all of those women after his tricks? What happened to all the stolen bodies? If he was planning to lead all of us into the fire, why did he die when you pushed him in? The, the whole thing's impossible. It, it couldn't have happened. Jack, what? What? You fool! What makes you think you know what reality is? <laughs> Tell me the truths of what can or cannot be. Oh, no. You've been living in one long dream. But now, you're going to discover what the real world is. Montag, 
master of illusion, the fire of the laws of reason. What is reason? Are you certain you know what reality is? How do you know that at this second you aren't sleeping in your bed dreaming that you are here sitting in this theater.